somehow, I woke up in my apartment. It didn't trigger any emotions at all, yet another day of my life, that's all. I got out of bed and went up to the computer. A message window flashed on the taskbar. I sat down and stared at the monitor. Somebody wrote to me, and that means that somebody still needs me. The message contained only two words. Wake up. What do they want from me? An unknown ID, is that spam? And what do they mean? Wake up. I'm not sleeping anymore. The window still kept flashing. I tried to close it but failed. Instead, yet another one popped out. And another one, and another one. All of them contained the same. Wake up. What the hell do you want from me? I screamed. I soon the whole screen was blazing with identical messages. I couldn't bear any more. I grabbed it and smashed it against the wall with all my strength. A phone rang. Strange. Who could that be? I picked up the phone and heard just... Wake up. On the other end, thousands of voices. Men, women, children were screaming. Wake up! I smashed the phone on the floor, but... It didn't break and kept ringing. In a moment, the whole world was filled with strangers. They were grabbing my hands, peering into my eyes and screaming, screaming, WAKE UP! I jumped off my bed in a cold sweat. Hmm, what a dream. I came to my senses in a couple of minutes and took a look at the clock. It's 5 p.m. How long have I slept? All the events of yesterday flew through my head. Searching for Lena, the devastating conversation, Elisa defeated. I really have to talk to her. Maybe she's cooled down overnight. I dressed up, went out of the cabin, hesitated a little while gathering my thoughts, then headed to Lena's cabin. What shall I say? How do I begin the conversation? I can't just go with, Hi, how are you? I was just passing by. There's no way I should lecture her straight off the bat. Not reaching a specific solution, I knocked. Nobody answered. I knocked again and pulled on the doorknob. It's not locked. That's odd. However, there was nobody inside. Well, that means Lane is not here. I'll grab some food. I might find her in the canteen. Going along the road of cabins, I didn't meet a single pioneer. That's odd, too. It's always crowded here at this time of day. Nobody was at the square, either. Coming up to the canteen, I started to get seriously concerned. It's time for dinner, but there was no sign of the hungry pioneer crowds. If only it was just that. The canteen was closed. Looks like something has happened during the day. I sat down on the porch and started to consider the situation. All the pioneers were gone, without any warning. But of course it's hard to, stay, to say that this camp, or my way of arriving here, is normal. But I hadn't encountered any completely inexplicable stuff during the week yet. There was lots of strange things, but... Maybe they're hiding in that bunker. I chuckled aloud. While this is all very, to put it mildly, mysterious, I was nowhere near experiencing a panic attack. No, it's just that they've left. I almost jumped out of my skin. Lena was standing next to me. You. You. Ooh. You can't just sneak up on people like that. You nearly gave me a heart attack. Sorry, she said calmly. Now her words dawned on me. Hold on, hold on a sec. Do you mean, do you mean by just left? The session's over. And the camp leader? She had some business to take care of in town, so she went with them. Okay, and what about you? I stayed. Lena was talking with complete calmness as if everything has happened was completely normal and routine. How? Why is that? What's the problem? When the session is over, the children depart for homes, don't they? And when was it decided that today was the last day of session? You won't believe this, but 
on the very first day. Moreover, Olga announced this at lineup. Yeah, even those lineups I attended, the last thing that crossed my mind was listening to the camp leader's announcements. Then why didn't anyone tell me anything? I waited for a chance to get out of this damned camp for so long, and when it finally appeared, I obviously slept through it. Well, that's exactly my style. I asked them not to. Even if you could ask not to, Olga, hold on, what? I asked for it, said Lena with some confidence. And what? You asked them to leave me behind too? Yes. And don't you think that's a little... Absolutely wrong! I started shouting. No, it's perfectly normal. I got a good look at Lena. Not a single emotion has crossed her face since the beginning of our talk. It looks like the girl that's standing right in front of me now is not that kind of girl that's afraid of crickets, blushes at every occasion, and reads romance novels. Okay, I got it. Looks like the sex, this situation is directly connected to my mystical arrival at this camp. Just who are you? Me? This morning I was Lena, she replied patiently. Oh yeah, and I'm Optimus Prime, born nine million years ago in the highlands of Scotland. I wasn't afraid of her or anything around, or, or anything around myself at that moment. I was just bursting with anger from within. Nice to meet you. I'm Lena. Okay, now let's get serious. I think that what you're saying is frankly impossible. Today, as it turns out, is the last day. Somehow I didn't know a thing about it, and the camp leader departs with everyone leaving me behind just so because you asked for it. Don't you find that all somewhat abnormal? Maybe I do. Are you hiding something? Maybe I am. Then spit out everything you got. I told you already. I buried my face in my hands and took a deep breath. Okay, and what am I supposed to do in this situation? I don't know. And what are you going to do? I don't know. I'm go with the flow. Well, here's the flow. I hissed, abruptly spreading my hands. And why are you worrying so much? For the first time, a flicker of interest has appeared on her face. And how do you expect me to feel? Glad? Well, not really. But you yourself did it. Me? Are you mad? And who said yesterday that he cares and he wants to be with me? What's that got to do with this? I pretended not to understand, but it was finally starting to dawn on me what she was driving at. Your wish has been granted. Yeah, sure. I mumbled under my breath. Well, I'm here with you. But that doesn't explain the way that it happened. There's always a couple of tricks that could help one succeed. And you? That is how? Yes. A smile crossed her face. Hmm. If I'd known you were so cunning from the very beginning. To tell the truth, I kind of liked this whole situation. Well, not really liked, but I was curious. Of course, I'm very sorry that I couldn't have escaped with everyone else. However, I'm having a tete-a-tete -tete with Lena now. That might mean that I'll get a chance to see the real her. And all the answers that I was longing for could be right there and not in some mysterious town which everyone else had headed for. Okay, so what are we going to do now? We? She smiled. Yeah, we. We're the only ones staying here. The canteen's closed and I seriously doubt there's any food left there anyway. Of course, Olga should return in the foreseeable future, but... What does it matter? Okay, it doesn't matter. Any suggestions? Hmm, what do you want? She asked with a sly smile. I would have grabbed something to eat, and then uh, I don't know. Well, let's go and have something. Where to? There should be some food left in my cabin. Okay, deal. We went in and Lena rummaged around the desk drawer. Well, there are cookies. Want some? He handed me a half-open pack of biscuits. Oh, how cute. I sneered. Why? Biscuits? Like in my childhood. I guess. She smiled and sat next to me. Well, 
I asked with my mouth full. What? So what are we going to do? I don't know. She ga wistfully gazed out of the window. But what do you want? I. But really, what do I want? A mere half an hour ago, my only thought was to get away from this damn camp. But now, right here, next to her, something seemed to change. Well, I don't know either. Think harder. She drew herself closer and gazed into my eyes. Well, I, you know... My face was blushing and my mind was racing. Not just because I was in such extreme proximity to a girl that was quite clearly wants something from me, but mainly because that girl was Lena. Well? She studied me closely. Lena, I... What? To say that she didn't look like herself was nothing. I was not afraid of this metamorphosis at all. Rather, I was afraid of myself. What could I do in such a situation? I... Don't you want to be with me? She whispered into my ear seductively. I did. I mean, I do. Then what's the problem? You know, it's also... Besides, I have some other circumstances... What circumstances? She pulled away from me. Well, various circumstances. Um, you don't prefer her, do you? Lena laughed. Hell no, how could you think that? Looks like I blushed even harder. Then what's the problem? Are you sure that you want that? I tried hard to change the subject. After all, just a week ago, I had my own normal life. A life where everything was strictly tied up and well organized, and where there was no place for girls. And now I was in some kind of mysterious camp with Lena sitting next to me and hinting towards something. How should I behave in such a situation? Yes, she frowned. Of course I do. What's the problem? Well, it's my... I was believing like I wasn't even 17, which was how I looked now, as if I was much younger. Mine too, she smiled. I had to decide what to do next. Now, after the session was closed and all the pioneers were gone, I had to seek the answers. Above all, I had to beware this girl could, that could change her behavior and even her character so easily at will. But at that exact moment, I was possessed by only one thought. What the hell? Well, if you don't mind. I closed my eyes. She said nothing, just smiled and moved even closer. Our lips locked in a long kiss. I forgot everything that happened at that moment. I forgot about this weird camp. I forgot about the local pioneers that were in fact gone. I forgot about our wacky camp leader. I forgot about my past life and about my future, if it would ever come. Right now, the only one who mattered was Elena, her soft lips, her warmth that poured deep into my soul, burning me from the inside. I gently moved her aside. Hold on. Don't you think this is way too fast? Why? She smiled and looked at me in such a way that I immediately felt ready to drown in her eyes. You're sure, aren't you? I am, I whispered quietly. At that exact moment, I truly loved Lena. I wanted to hold her tighter and never let go. And she felt the same, of course. Time flashed by way too fast, and we became as one. When I woke up, it was already dark outside. I got out of bed, put on my trousers, and had a stroll around the room. What was that? Just an animal instinct, or maybe it was something more. No, it's all wrong. Completely wrong. I'm stuck in this camp. I've lost my chance to get out of here, and most of all, I'm with a girl who probably has a split personality and manic depressive disorder. I looked at the sleeping Lena. Anyhow, she's marvellous. Everything that happened between us literally only a couple of hours ago flashed before my eyes and I felt shivers up my spine. 
Um, I don't know if it's right or wrong, but I could have returned back in time. I would have done exactly the same thing. I smiled widely and sat down next to her on the bed. I had absolutely no desire to wake Lena up. It was an unspeakable pleasure just watching how she sleeps. People say that the sleep reveals the true face of a person. I heard a legend that some ancient civilization had a custom. Before getting married, a woman watches her fiancé sleeping for three nights, and then she decides whether to marry him or not. Bearing that in mind, I could confidently say that Lena's face showed nothing but goodness, kindness, and childlike naivete. Could this really be the girl that knocked Elisa out yesterday? Well, whatever it may be, everything's already happened. And I've already seen Lena like that. The humility for the first few days, the hysterics back there on the island, the rage at the square yesterday, her passion today. How can one single human cope with so many opposing personality traits? Might it be the case that she really has a double, triple, even quadruple split personality? I don't know how much time I spent there just watching Lena sleeping. It might have been a couple of minutes, or it might have been a couple of hours. Finally, she awakened. Good morning. Lena smiled tenderly. Come here. She rose and hugged me. I didn't resist and plopped down on the bed. You're so wonderful. She whispered into my ear, kissing my neck. You too. But my voice hesitated. Want to do it again? She asked playfully. Hold on. I moved her away gently. You know, all this is anything but simple. When we just met, you seemed to be one person, then you seemed to be another one, and today... Now I can't understand at all who you really are. And yet again, what you did to Elisa. Her again? Lena covered up the blanket and turned away. Didn't you like what we did? Or want to do it with her too? Now, I won't hold you back. Come on, compare us. I'll leave you her address. You can write and tell me who's better, or we can have a threesome. She sounded like she wasn't talking about me or her. Like she was talking about complete strangers. Oh, there you go again, I sighed. Throughout today, you should have realised that the last person I would think about now would be Elisa. Okay, you're right. She turned to me, smiled and hugged me tightly. Hold on. I still have to understand. Why? I can't just simply, and yes, I do care. That's why I really need to know who you really are. I'm just me. She answered in the same languid voice. My break started to break from all these emotions. I have to calm down somehow. I jumped to my feet and moved across to sit on the opposite bed. Fine. Lena said disappointedly and started to get dressed. I'm not asking for much, just a few answers to a few questions. Later, it's time to depart, she interrupted me impassively. What, where are we going? What do you mean, where? Back to town, of course. But you told me. Well, I might have withheld something. In fact, I persuaded Olga that we still had some extremely urgent matters here and we'd come later. How could we get to town, then? By a bus, of course. There are no buses here, I grinned. What do you mean, no buses? Of course there are. Route 410. I didn't know whether I should believe it or not. The situation seemed to be going out of control. But I couldn't argue. Okay. I managed cautiously. Come on. Get packed. Meet me in the square in ten minutes. Okay. I gave up asking and left the cabin. Frankly speaking, I had almost nothing to pack. I tossed my winter clothing in a bag and headed for the square. Lena was already waiting for me in there with a gym bag on her shoulder. You don't seem to carry a lot of baggage. It's just enough, she smiled. Let me carry it. Please do. Although a bag seemed almost weight weightless, a bit of chivalry never hurt anyone. 
We were walking and Lena was constantly telling jokes, anecdotes, funny stories and never stopped laughing. Now I'd really lost touch with the person next to me. Is she the one I met a week ago or the one I saw for the first time this morning? When we reached the bus stop, I took out my mobile phone and checked the time. Surprisingly, there was still some power left. It was almost 11pm. Isn't it a bit late for buses? Oh, what's that? asked Lena curiously. Oh, just a toy. Take it. It's a gift. Thank you. She smiled and took the phone. What can you play on it? You'll work it out yourself later. It's not that hard. Anyway, a mobile phone is totally useless here. We waited for about half an hour and Lena kept talking and talking. Well, I must admit that I found her stories amusing and I felt comfortable with her, but what about the bus? So what about... I didn't finish the sentence and I saw a glimmer of headlights in the distance. Ah, here it is! Lena exclaimed enthusiastically. The bus was slowly carrying us away from Sovyanok Pioneer Camp. I just wanted to believe that we'd never, ever go back. The darkness around the window prevented us from seeing the road, the woods, or the fields. Actually, it might be the case that they'd all long gone and were flying through a void towards the unknown. Anywhere, I couldn't care less for the surroundings. I just kept listening to Lena. Perhaps she'd said more words today than she'd had through in her past life. You know, I interrupted her at last. I still don't understand. What exactly? She smiled. How come you could be so hesitant, so humble at first, unable to string two words together, and then... Like this. Is it that important? Yes, for me it is. Well... She took a deep breath before answering. You see, I've always been the way you saw me the first time we met. I was like that in public. I wasn't able to live as I wanted since childhood, so I put on a mask. She went silent. Although, let's not go too deep into that. Lena laughed and cuddled my arm, pressing her body tightly against me. Okay, I get it. It was probably very hard for her to discuss it indeed. Anyway... I got a lot even from such a short explanation, but still. Can you sh be sure that you won't turn into that one again? That you won't retreat into your shell, won't surrender to your anger and rage? That depends on you. Lena smiled sharp, slyly. It was now, it was just now that I realized that I'm playing a high stakes game. On the one hand, I've spent a week in this obscure world just trying to find some answers. I have nothing to my name and nowhere to return to, damn it. On the other hand, there's this girl who obviously matters so much to me. I almost didn't need to think about whether I had any feelings for Lena. I just wanted to be by her side, look at her, listen to her voice. I liked her the way she was. I assured myself that this is it. The real Lena is in front of me. And now... When these thoughts come back about my past life, my mysterious appearance in an 80s pioneer camp, it's not just the time for such thoughts. I feel good right now being close to her. I don't want to return anywhere. I don't want any answers. I don't want to think about what's going to happen tomorrow. If it's up to me, then... I just want to believe that you'll always be the way you are now, for this is the way I love you. Then I'll keep being this way as long as we're together. She hugged me even tighter. I don't know how long we'd been on the road, but Lena's chatter gradually started to quiet down. She put her hand, on, she put her head on my shoulder, but was still telling me a story about her cat getting into the sleeping medicine, getting dizzy, and wreaking havoc. I slowly started to doze off myself. But still, why did you hit Elisa? She looked at me closely with a serious expression on her face. I've always hated that bitch. Lena laughed loudly and dazzled me into my shoulder. I desperately tried not to fall asleep. 
It's unknown what's awaiting there after the bus's next turn. It might be a new life waiting for me, or it might be the end of this fairy tale, and I'll be buried in the coffin of the peeling walls and ceiling of my old apartment. But it was a losing battle. Morpheus had summoned legions of mon monsters under the command of fatigue, exhaustion, desolation, and uncertainty. I had no chance to win this battle against these four horsemen of the apocalypse, and I drifted off to sleep.